current favorite composite leather basketball. I'm Tony, welcome back to Street Ball Strategy. Yeah, I'm rhyming again off top of Go to mums and writing again and they can't even stop it. Cause when I shoot his buckets, put that man in a coffin. Take this man to the moon, put this man in a rocket. Today I'm continuing my series about my current favorite basketball gear. And today we're talking about my current favorite composite leather basketball. Now let me keep it real with you guys, be right up front. This is my current favorite composite leather basketball by default. So nowadays, you have a very long spectrum when it comes to composite leather basketballs, right? On one end of the spectrum, you have composite leather basketballs that look and feel and perform just like indoor leather basketballs. And then on the other side of the spectrum, you have balls that look and feel and perform just like rubber outdoor basketballs, even though they're technically composite as well. This basketball falls on the leather end of that spectrum. And it's my favorite by default currently because it's the only basketball I have that falls in that leather end of that spectrum. I'm a rubber basketball guy. I prefer rubber basketballs in general. Most of my basketballs are rubber. Even if they're technically composite, they, they look and feel and perform like rubber basketballs. But just because this is my current favorite composite leather basketball by default because it's the only one I currently have does not mean that this ball is bad in any way. So let's talk about why this is currently my favorite even though it's technically my only one. I talk a lot about perspective on this channel. I have a whole playlist about m basketball mindset and this video, this basketball is a great example of that because just because I'm a rubber basketball guy and that's what I usually prefer does not mean that this ball doesn't actually have real value and like real everyday real world usage for me. This ball has actually helped me a lot because when we're talking about, first of all, in terms of shooters, which I am not, a lot of shooters prefer composite leather basketballs that are in like on that leather end of the spectrum because of how smooth and soft and like buttery they are. Like when you run your fingertips over the ball, they don't stick. A rubber basketball, your fingertips will be stuck in place because the it's meant to be like tacky and sticky. Leather basketballs, it's meant to glide. It's supposed to be smooth and buttery and that's what this basketball is. A lot of shooters prefer that. But more specifically for me and my game, when we talk about handling a basketball, right? Having control over how you handle a basketball, especially when we're talking about dribbling, practicing drilling, uh, working out with basketballs like this that are smooth, that are buttery, right? When you practice, you know, intentionally with balls like this, that's how you can really improve your sort of hand-eye coordination with a basketball in terms of how you handle it. Because you got to pay closer attention, right? You, you have to focus more because if you don't, this ball is going to get away from you because of how smooth it is. It's easier to handle a rubber basketball because it pretty much sticks to your fingertips. This ball, you actually really have to pay attention. So when you do work out and train with a ball like this, you really do get a better feel of like what you need to do to control a more slippery, smooth, buttery kind of basketball. So when you're working on anything that has to do with handles, right, this is an ideal ball for those kind of situations. For me, especially because I live in Michigan, like it's it's November right now in Michigan. I usually give you guys like a demonstration of how this ball still performs, but you can go watch my actual real uh, review of the basketball for that. I'm not gonna give myself a cold trying to, you know, make myself look bad by trying to handle a composite leather basketball in November. I'm bad enough during the summer. But especially for me, like, because I live in Michigan and I take the whole winter off of playing basketball usually because, you know, I, I'm an, primarily an outdoor basketball player, right? When I come back to the court in March or April after having five plus months off, right? And I know my handles, my dribble is going to be rusty and I want to bring it back as quickly as I can. This is a perfect ball to train and practice work out with because if I can handle this basketball, if I can get my handles back, my dribble back with this basketball, then I know I definitely will have a much better handle with the rubber basketballs that I normally use. So in the spring, when I first get back on the court, this is great to work on handling, even to work on shooting, because if I can control my shooting with this ball, then I know I definitely can with my rubber basketballs. So it's just a matter of perspective. Like, even if you are a rubber basketball guy, like you will still find utility for this basketball if you have the right perspective. Also talking about perspective, if you are 
already an indoor leather basketball user. Like that's what you're used to. You're used to indoor leather basketballs. The reality is when you come down to this basketball, your perspective is probably gonna be that this ball feels cheap. It's probably gonna kind of feel plasticky because you're gonna be comparing it to the indoor leather basketballs that you're used to. That doesn't mean it's not gonna have value and utility like I was talking about in terms of, you know, really trying to dial in your handles with a ball that's more uh, smooth and buttery. It's just that you're, you're gonna be used to that more premium leather feel. This ball doesn't have the kind of cushion, the kind of softness that an actual indoor leather basketball has, but, it's, but part of that reason is because it's partly designed to be used outdoors so it's you can't really expect it to have that you know authentic leather indoor feeling and then from the other end of the spectrum like if you're used to outdoor rubber style basketballs or maybe you've never had an actual kind you've never like handled and used a an actual like composite leather basketball before from that perspective this ball is probably going to feel pretty nice it's probably going to feel kind of fancy if it's your first time experiencing a ball like this. Either way, the ball still has value, it still has utility, it's just a matter of, you know, I have many different basketballs, right? And it's up to me to figure out which ball can be used in what situation optimally. Different basketballs have different characteristics, like different strengths and weaknesses, so it's up to me to go, okay, this ball's good for this use, this ball's good for handling and dribbling like what ball has what strengths that it can be used to improve your game especially when we're talking about outdoor recreational basketball like showing up to a random park with random people who are going to be using random basketballs that you're probably not used to kind of basketballs that you're not used to handling you're going to come across basketballs like this that like some other person another player is that's their regular everyday basketball and then when you get on the court with them and you have to use their basketball well the more familiar you are with using this kind of basketball because you, you know you have a broadened horizon of okay i've used every kind of basketball i've gotten used to every kind of basketball so now when i get to use this kind of basketball even though it's not the kind that i normally use on my own in my in, in my own experience in my own game I'm comfortable with using this ball because I have experience because I have not limited myself to only using the balls that I'm used to using. So just because this isn't a ball that I like or that I'm used to or that I would bring to the park doesn't mean that it doesn't have value or usage. I use it every year. It helps me every year. And if I, if, if this, like if it completely broke down or went flat or whatever, I would replace this ball with another ball like this even though it's not my go-to because I sort of need it, I have value for it to train, work out, practice with it to make my game better. So just because this is my default CLB does not mean that it's a bad thing at all. For you longtime subscribers, you would know that I used to have the Wilson NCAA composite leather game replica basketball. And to be honest, that was maybe, probably, my favorite composite leather basketball on that leather end of the spectrum, that's probably my favorite one of all time, or at least in history. And I liked it so much that I wanted to share it with you guys, so I did a giveaway. Like, if you're a subscriber to the channel, sometimes I do basketball giveaways, and I gave away that basketball to a subscriber, thinking that, oh, I'll, you know, I'm, I'll get other composite leather basketballs, or I will replace that one with a, another one, right, another oh, a Wilson NCAA game replica, I'll just replace it. And any composite leather basketball that I've had since then just hasn't lived up to that Wilson ball. And I think Wilson must have stopped, like, manufacturing it because you can't find it on Wilson's website anymore. You can find it on Amazon, like, third party, but it's, like, $100, and it, I love that ball, but it's not a $100 basketball. But even if I still had that ball, or even if I had replaced it, and even if that was my actual, like, overall favorite composite leather basketball on that end of the spectrum, I would still want and use this basketball every year because that Wilson ball, that ball had a great uh, grip to it, like great handles. The, the texture to the ball, the, the grip channels, the ball overall just had a great, like, soft, leather grip feel to it. This ball, especially once you break it in, 
does not. It loses a lot of its grip. It gets to be really smooth, really buttery. But in terms of trying to work on handles and handling the ball and really sort of dialing that in, this ball is perfect for that. So even if I still had that Wilson ball, this would still be my favorite composite leather basketball for like drills and training. So let me know what you guys think. Are you down for the Spalding Zio basketball? Have you used it? What do you think? Or do you have any recommendations for any other composite leather basketballs that are on that leather end of the spectrum that you'd want me to check out that you think I would really like? If I get the same recommendation over and over again, I would be happy to get that ball and give it a try and review it for you guys. Also, <laughs> let me know if you have any lines on how to get a, you know, hands on that Wilson NCAA game replica ball again. If I can find it somewhere that's not a hundred dollars. And if you like this video, if you found it helpful, if you think it's going to help you make a decision of whether or not you should give the Spalding Zio basketball a try, then please subscribe to the channel. Also, make sure you hit that thanks button down below. When you hit that thanks button, any comment that you make to let me know what you think of this ball or where I can find the Wilson or any other recommendations you have for another CLB, any comment that you make is going to be highlighted if you hit that thanks button. Not only that, but that thanks button directly supports me and the channel. So anyone that does hit that thanks button know I genuinely appreciate it. As always, like, share, comment. You can find links to this basketball down in the comments, down in the description of this video. And until next time, I will see you guys next week. I won't break this only, make the same mistake as Tony. Never that I gotta make them know me. Walk in a room, I made it boldly. Trust me, you can't fake this phonies. No need for staying lonely. I said I won't break this only. Man, I won't break this only.